This problem generalizes the standard um, PN junction to a so-called hetero PN junction, where the transition between the P and N regions of the material uh, are accompanied by a change of material. So in the problem, there are um, a number of quantities given, especially the electron affinities of gallium arsenide um, of 4.07 electron volts, um, the affinity of aluminium gallium arsenide, which is the 3.74 electron volt, the band gaps of 1.794 electron volts and 1.424 electron volts. And from this one gets the band offset of 0 0.33 electron volts and 0 0.04 electron volts. Now, it says in the problem that we should assume that the aluminium gallium arsenide material is degenerately N-doped, whereas the G uh, gallium arsenide material is degenerately P-doped. Now, thinking in terms of a electrochemical potential of Fermi energy, we would therefore need to draw in aluminium gallium arsenide a Fermi energy or electrochemical potential that is above the conduction band edge such that this is the Fermi energy in aluminium gallium arsenide while since gallium arsenide is p-type the Fermi energy would be down here and the Fermi energy would be this distance to the um, top of the valence band. Now in the first question, we are asked to sketch the equilibrium band diagram of this structure. Equilibrium means that the electrochemical potential in the whole structure is a constant. So we cannot maintain, the system cannot maintain in equilibrium a difference of the electrochemical potential in aluminium gallium arsenide and in gallium arsenide. If this were the case, that we have such a difference, electrons would be able to fill lower energy states in gallium arsenide and therefore they would deplete or leave behind a certain depletion region in the aluminium gallium arsenide which is then positively charged. So we would have a positively charged uh, space charge layer in aluminium gallium arsenide and correspondingly we would get a negatively uh, charged space charge layer in gallium arsenide, very much like in a standard p-n junction. So um, how does the corresponding diagram uh, then look like? I prepared a little sketch of that here. So in order to get the electrochemical potential, which is the dash dotted line here, constant throughout the structure, and have the aluminium gallium arsenide um, degenerately N-doped, meaning Fermi energy above the conduction band edge, and the gallium arsenide P-doped, meaning Fermi energy below the valence band top, um, the bands have to bend in this way. Um, there will be a positive cha space charge layer that bends the conduction band and valence band edges up in aluminium gallium arsenide and there will be a negative space charge layer that bends them down in um, the gallium arsenide layer. Where do these positive and negative space charges come from? The basic idea is that the material is volume doped, um, but dopants are ionized. As long as the electrons stemming from the dopants stay with the dopants, which is the case in this bulk region out here, the system is locally charge neutral. But is if, uh, as it is the case close to the interface, some electrons move over to the gallium arsenide side, they will leave behind positively charged 
uh, donors, which I could indicate here. Um, close to the band edge as positive charges and the uh, this positive charge will essentially generate bending of the band. These electrons go into the gallium arsenide so they must occupy uh, some available states in gallium arsenide which are of course acceptor states that lead to the p-doping here and as long as the acceptor states um, as long as we are in the bulk region, the system is again locally charge neutral, but if the Fermi energy moves above um, the um, valence band edge, these um, acceptor states will be locally charged because they sit close, the energies of these states sit close to the band edge, and this gives rise to a negative space charge region here. Now, like in the case of, um, of the normal PN junction, we would um, approximate uh, this situation with a constant space charge density, a positive space charge density in the aluminium gallium arsenide material and a negative constant space charge density in the gallium arsenide material. And the concentration of the local space charges is here the donor concentration ND um, on the aluminium gallium arsenide side and this would be the concentration NA on the gallium arsenide side assuming that all acceptors or donors are fully ionized in the space charge region. Now these space charge regions they will have a certain extent um, and we call this um, extent dn and dp so dn would be the extent in gallium arsenide and dp the extent in an aluminium gallium arsenide now the integral of course of this um, space charge density meaning nd times dp must be equal to um, na times dn in order to maintain overall charge neutrality and this is um, the first condition we have to apply to this structure um, charge neutrality requires um, nd times um, dp is equal to na times dn. This is our first equation. Um, so in the problem we have of course now uh, a few unknown quantities. Essentially what we want to do is we want to express these um, dn and dp depletion lengths uh, in terms of given quantities like the electron affinities, the band gaps, the Fermi energies um, and the doping levels. Now having one equation is not sufficient because we have these two unknown quantities. So the second um, equation is obtained from um, thinking about thermodynamic equilibrium. So if we um, imagine to walk from the aluminium gallium arsenide side to the gallium arsenide side and uh, we take uh, certain um, steps in energy when we do that starting at the electrochemical potential here then we walk down um, to the band edge by the Fermi energy of algas then we walk up the electric field um, up to this point then we walk down um, this band offset then we walk over this electric field then we walk down this band gap and then we walk down this Fermi energy in gallium arsenide then we need to end up at the same energy position where we started 
and this is the condition of thermodynamic equilibrium and we can write this down uh, in the following way this would be thermodynamic equilibrium that requires that going down by E Fermi in aluminium gallium arsenide um, going down the band gap in aluminium gallium arsenide so this brings us down here and then walking up delta phi n the electrostatic potential hill that forms due to the space charge layers then jumping by delta ev the valence band offset then walking up delta vp the electric potential uh, in gallium arsenide delta phi p um, and then going down then we are up here then going down uh, by e fermi gallium arsenide needs to lead us back to the same energy where we started so this must be zero now in this equation of course we have introduced two new quantities that are unknown to us which are these um, electrostatic potential differences delta phi n and delta phi p uh, which we have to work out um, um, from Poisson's equation and we have also introduced Fermi energies in aluminium gallium arsenide and in gallium arsenide that we have to work out um, using the doping densities and the density of states. So essentially in this way we can get rid of these unknowns and obtain an additional equation uh, that we can make uh, use of. So let's first look uh, into the into expressing the Fermi energies um, uh, and relate them to doping concentrations. So using the three-dimensional density of states for these materials we find um, the relations between Fermi energies and doping concentrations um, to be ND is equal to one over three pi squared times two m star in aluminium gallium arsenide which is a material parameter that is known over h bar squared to the power of three half um, times the fermi energy in aluminium gallium arsenide to the power of three half so you see this relates this Fermi energy to the doping density via a material property which is the effective mass and in a similar way we get the ac um, acceptor level is related to the Fermi energy in gallium arsenide via 1 over 3 pi squared um, 2m gallium arsenide star effective mass in gallium arsenide divided by Planck's constant squared 
to the power of 3 half times the Fermi energy in gallium arsenide to the power of 3 half. So these two relations, they make use of the approximation that the valence band is, has a, a simple isotropic parabolic dispersion without degeneracies. So that's an assumption that we put in here for simplicity. Um, especially the valence band is typically more complicated, which we neglect at this point because we just want to illustrate the principle underlying such a calculation. Um, so this gives us in the equation up here, which we want to label equation 2, the Fermi energies in terms of doping concentrations. So these two quantities are now expressed in terms of Na and Nd if we use equations 3 and 4. What is still missing are the delta phi n and delta phi p, and these are obtained from solving Poisson's equation. We know that we have a certain constant charge, space charge density um, uh, extending over uh, a certain region in space. And solving Poisson's equation in one dimension, given a, cons um, given a constant charge density, gives, of course, a parabolic uh, dependence of the potential on the uh, spatial coordinate. And this leads to an expression for the change delta phi um, p, for example, given by one half times e squared n a divided by epsilon epsilon zero times the thickness d p squared. So we see putting delta phi p into this equation here puts Na into it, but it also puts the width of the depletion, the unknown width dp uh, squared into it. Um, delta phi p is now on this side, uh, and I call this depletion dn, so I, I should put dn here. In a similar way, we can do um, delta phi n. So delta phi n would then be 1 half e squared n d divided by epsilon, epsilon naught. We assume the same epsilon relative dielectric constant in the two materials um, times dp squared. So this would be equation 5 and 6. So now we see that having these two unknowns dn and dp um, requires two equations. The first of which is the charge neutrality equation and the second of which is the thermodynamic equilibrium equation and we see that dn and dp come in uh, via delta phi p and delta phi n from these two equations. And we can also express the unknown Fermi energies here in terms of the doping concentrations using uh, these expressions in equations 3 and 4. Um, this shows us that we have uh, now a complete set of equations to express dn and dp in terms of material properties and instead of going through the um, complicated calculation I will just give you the result which is dp is equal to a expression 2 epsilon epsilon 0 divided by e squared times na divided by nd um, times E Fermi aluminium gallium arsenide, which is to be de to be determined by this expression, plus E Fermi gallium arsenide, plus 
plus the band gap of aluminium gallium arsenide minus the valence band offset delta EV divided by the sum of the acceptor and donor doping concentrations to the power of one half. You can immediately see that since the N and DP appear squared here and linear there, we will get a square root uh, dependence. Um, a very similar expression holds for dn. It is essentially the same expression in terms of the second factor and the uh, uh, the third factor and the uh, first factor. So we have two epsilon epsilon zero over e squared. We have the second fraction here, and now n a divided by n d is simply replaced by n d divided by Na. So um, this has shown you how these two conditions, charge neutrality and thermodynamic equilibrium, determine the band structure of such a hetero p-n junction. And you've seen that it is essentially delta EV which comes in here um, and the two different uh, band gaps, the band gap of aluminium gallium arsenide that come in here um, to represent the heterostructure. Now, um, the second question is uh, how the corresponding IV characteristic would look like for such a system. Um, as compared perhaps to a standard p-n junction. Now you can imagine if you apply a voltage to this system, then you would change the relative positions of the electrochemical potential in gallium arsenide and in aluminium gallium arsenide. Now you can imagine if you want to pull down the gallium arsenide electrochemical potential, then you will reach at some point uh, what we call flat band conditions. So the bands will follow and bend down and this will give rise to flat band conditions. So this space charge region is essentially flooded by electrons and this, um, these electrons here are removed um, to the right and this will give rise to a sudden onset of current as soon as you go beyond the flat band condition. Um, if you go in the opposite direction, if you shift up the electrochemical potential in gallium arsenide, you will go further and further into depletion. So uh, you will get a thicker and thicker space charge layer in gallium arsenide and in aluminium gallium arsenide. But at some point, the difference in the two bands will be such that tunneling from the valence band into the conduction band of aluminium gallium arsenide becomes possible, which in, a, in case of a standard p-n junction we call the band-to-band -band tunneling breakdown of the junction. So overall the IV trace of the system will not look so different from the corresponding IV trace of a standard p-n junction going in one direction in voltage we will reach uh, the flat band condition and beyond that we will have an exponential essentially exponential increase of the current in the negative direction we will for a long time have no current but at some point there is band to band tunneling leading to a breakdown of the diode which gives a very, very steep uh, increase of the current.